Tis the season to be jolly, but let us do so with care and consideration for others. Hello and welcome to our Thursday edition of Jamaica Magazine. I am Adrian Atkinson. Today we help you to navigate safely through your Christmas budget, spending, and online activities. So stay with us. The first case we had was of seven Indian nationals who were trafficked and where they were found, they were living where the dogs were living. They were not fed, just given scraps. So those are just some real male stuff. If you know of someone who is being trafficked, call the counter-terrorism and organized crime arm of the Jamaica Constabulary Force at 876-967-5627 or 876-967-1389. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, December 10. The zones of special operations, ZOSOs in Mount Salem, St. James, Denham Town, and Greenwich Town in Kingston will be extended by a further 60 days. On Tuesday, the House of Representatives approved the resolutions for the extensions, which were moved by National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang. We will not allow the criminals to bring back fear into the communities that have largely been living without fear, especially in the zones of special operation. We are also continuing to deal with the development programs in the specific zones to ensure that in the medium term we will get the kind of behavior change that is required. Addressing public safety and order amidst COVID, Minister Chang said the security forces would be enforcing the law under the Disaster Risk Management Act to clamp down on illegal recreational activities. We continue in operation. The police have been showing larger numbers of I said, tactical operations and VCPs across the country. Meanwhile, starting next week, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development will be rolling out COVID-19 town criers across the island's 14 municipalities, urging persons to observe the protocols. In Parliament Tuesday, Portfolio Minister Desmond McKenzie revealed that more than 300 illegal parties were being held in the country on a weekly basis. These are happening even though the municipal corporations have not been issuing permits in keeping with government's COVID-19 containment measures. Minister McKenzie says there's also a worrying trend of businesses not following the protocols. He told the House that some have been falsely advertising that they're endorsed by the municipal corporations, while others have been operating as nightclubs under the guise of restaurants. The government has no intention in stifling the entertainment sector, but we are guided by the advice of the health sector and we are saying at this time, no permits for any events, no parties, no bike shows, neither round robin, neither open or shut your mouth. There is no such permit, Madam Speaker. That has been granted. Minister McKenzie also reiterated that closure orders are still in effect for 17 beaches and 19 rivers. Markets will be opened from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. from Monday to Saturday and are closed on Sundays and public holidays. Children in the Justice Ministry's Child Diversion Program will benefit from increased psychosocial interventions, advice related to sexual reproductive health, and access to greater justice. This comes as the ministry signed a $10 million agreement with UNICEF this week. Portfolio Minister Delroy Chuck says while he expects that more children will be referred to the program, it is already operating effectively. At least we can say to UNICEF, and to the international community that Jamaica is paying attention to our young children, many of whom get into trouble. And we're taking, ensuring that they're properly mentored, properly counseled, and to steer them away from further criminal activity. 
He says the funding will also support the dissemination of information on the program and facilitate community discussions. UNICEF's country representative in Jamaica, Mariko Kagashima, says the program exemplifies Jamaica's commitment to leave no child behind. Here in Jamaica, we welcome efforts to ensure that the children are not denied their liberty uh, unjustly. The Education Ministry has established a transportation sector working group to identify and address the general transportation needs of students to support the phased reopening of schools. During Tuesday's sitting of Parliament, Portfolio Minister Favel Williams said surveys with students chosen for the two-week pilot face-to-face -face classes found that the most popular method of transportation was public passenger vehicles. When the students were asked if they felt safe while traveling to school, only a little over half of them answered in the affirmative. Stakeholders also expressed concern with respect to vehicular transportation. The working group has already convened two weekly meetings um, with, the, with the mandate to ensure that adequate fleet of government-owned buses are deployed to transport students within the areas currently served by JUTC and the Montego Bay Metro to ensure that the COVID-19 protocols are established and operationalized to support the safety of the commuting public, especially our students, and to support the Ministry's Rural Transportation Program to engage contract operators to provide transportation services to approximately 7,500 students from 250 primary and high schools across 13 parishes. Minister Williams says the phased implementation of the service has already commenced. Still on education, the minister has announced that changes will be made to next year's sitting of the primary exit profile PEP to take into account the interruption in student studies due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister Williams says the performance task and curriculum-based tests have been delayed for later dates in the year and the content coverage on which students will be assessed has been reduced. The first component to be tested at grade 6 is the ability test, which will be administered Tuesday, February 23, 2021. As for the performance tasks for grade 6 students, language arts will be Thursday, April 22, while mathematics will be on Friday, April 23, 2021. For the curriculum-based tests, grade 6 students will sit language arts and science on Tuesday, May 25, and mathematics and social studies on Wednesday, May 26, 2021. The ministry, through its usual bulletins to school, will be sharing this information. The primary exit profile is a series of assessments that provide a profile of the strengths and weaknesses of each child and their readiness for grade 7. And finally, the Education Ministry is in consultation with the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, regarding the 2021 sitting of the CAPE and CSEC examinations. Minister Favor Williams says CXC has explained that, based on their psychometrical analysis, it is not recommended that they reduce the content coverage for their exams. However, the Council says it will proceed with a delayed sitting of the exam, moving it from May, June to June, July, given the ongoing pandemic. CXC has also proposed to return to using the regular format of the exam, paper one, paper two, and the SBAs with 100% moderation. The minister says the nation will be updated in short order on the outcomes of the deliberations. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.
In this feature we're about to show you, financial experts give us tips on how to budget and spend carefully during the Christmas season. So you've been budgeting all year long and you may think that Christmas is the time to, you know, cut your dollars a little loose. Hold on, before you think about that, remember that the new year is just a few days away. So rather than having to restructure your finances then, how about you continue budgeting right now? We have some financial experts dropping some nuggets of wisdom about drafting your Christmas budget and stitching up your holiday finances. Christmas time is a time when we want to have fun and frolic. And so it's a time when we can really get distracted from the fact that we do have reality that comes next year. So that's why budgeting is important because we want to ensure that whatever we do to make our Christmas fat does not make our New Year frugal. So look back at your budgets. Look carefully. How much money do you really have to spend on the Christmas? One of the tips is you can actually put that money in something and call it your Christmas budget. So separate that Christmas budget from all the other accounts. Have your ATM card connected to that particular budget, that particular account. And when you go shopping, remember, you know exactly what your budget is. And let us say that budget is $30,000. If you have budgeted that you're going to spend at $30,000 on five persons, and you have overspent on one gift, then automatically you'll know that in order to make sure there's money in the account, you've got to cut back on it. If you keep all the money in one place, it's not going to register psychologically that, hey, I've reached my max. Uh, 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 uh. So it becomes important to put things in place for yourself so that you can have fun this Christmas. But remember, next year, rather than being totally frugal, can be fat. Do proper budgets in up to even this Christmas and determine what your disposable income is. Don't spend outside of your disposable income. Make sure that you put aside money for the necessities like you know food that you need to, to eat. Um, also, you, because Christmas is here, it doesn't mean that you don't have the car payment and you don't have the mortgage. And also remember that people normally get paid earlier. So the next paycheck is going to be more than a month away. So ensure that you do that proper budgeting. If you've spent enough Christmas here in JA or most places really, it's easy to recognize the extravagant spending and skimpy saving habits that crop up during this time of the year. But understanding those trends could very well be the means to achieving your thrifty Christmas experience. People spend a lot more. Because of the euphoria of the season, you know, people get caught up and people will just go out there and spend, you know, which is why I said people should budget and um, stick to the budget because when you get caught up in the euphoria and the emotions come on of Christmas, you know, you want to, you, anything you see you'll spend. So um, you're going to the store and because you're happy, you know, because it's Christmas time, you're going and you just spend anything you see, especially when you have a credit card, you know, if you if you don't have control of your credit card, leave it at home. You know, don't carry it with you. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna write down the names of every single individual that you want to give something to. Look at that maximum budget that you have and then divide it out and see, okay, if my maximum budget is $30,000 and I have 30 people on the list, then it would mean $1,000 per person if we divide it equally. So I know that some persons are going to deserve a gift that would be costing more than the $1,000. So now you would now start to say, okay, this person, based on who they are to me, this person needs a $10,000 gift on average. So it leaves me with $20,000 for everybody else. So do it that way. Now, for some persons, you're going to realize, hey, mm -mm, I can't buy a gift. This Christmas 2020 is going to be different. Um, COVID environment, COVID restrictions in place, income levels are less. Um, another thing also is that food prices might go up because of the 
the recent rains that we've had and the shortage of agriculture across but we can still enjoy Christmas as it was supposed to be which is really just enjoying it with, with friends, families, go to church maybe this year you know um, and you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on entertainment on food and on gifts you know just spend time with the friends and family which is the most important thing so I guess the good news is that with a bit of financial planning and some resourcefulness, we can still have a very Merry Christmas while avoiding the financial fatigue of the New Year. We remain resilient in our fight against known and unknown threats to our country. We are never daunted. We are committed to continuously deliver effective and efficient service when we save lives and protect property. And we continue to reassure with courtesy, integrity, and respect for the rights of all. We are building forward together. With most activities and financial transactions taking place online, let's stop and think before we click. Cyber criminal activities are on the rise, affecting the lives of people worldwide, resulting in a need to increase the awareness of all citizens. The Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology has been making the internet more accessible to all of us, but with that comes greater responsibility. As the government aggressively moves to creating the digital knowledge-based society. Um, it is a very important to ensure that citizens, businesses, everybody understands the responsibility that comes along with using technology. The government of Jamaica continues to move with um, help from the Universal Service Fund, it's an agency under the ministry, to broaden access to technology and the internet by creating public Wi-Fi services and deploying community access points. Um, this is an effort to ensure that everyone has access to the internet and cyberspace. The ever-increasing popularity of social media platforms and its dark side has prompted the Stop, Think, Connect campaign. Stop, Think, Connect um, brings out general safety practices and we encourage persons to stop and think. Actually, you find at times persons, you're going to post a selfie, for example, and you take that selfie. We encourage you to stop and think before you actually post that selfie. Is it necessary to post? Do the people really need to see this? Do I really need to post this? What effect can it have in the future? Stop, Think, Connect is not just geared towards our personal use of the internet. It should be incorporated in our work lives as well. Cybersecurity in the workplace is everyone's business. A lot of institutions worldwide, and Jamaica is not excluded from this, have been impacted by ransomware and other malware. A lot of times what we find is that it's that end user that clicked on an email link, an attachment, or went to a website that they shouldn't have. We have to make an effort now to not only educate users, but actual persons at all levels within institution to be aware of the threat that is out there. Because when an organized cybercrime is coming, it's usually targeted at critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure such as energy, water, telecoms and media are just some of the targeted areas. Ignore pop-ups when they appear on your computer and never trust emails from questionable sources. By opening any of the following, you may be giving a virus a free access pass to your devices. There are several antivirus and anti-malware software on the market. Use them. And also remember to keep your private information private. Passwords, driver's license, 
national identification number, traveling and banking information should not be saved on public computers. Cybersecurity is our shared responsibility. Let's play our part. Stop. Think. Connect. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum, or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five hours of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. Up next, teaching our boys the fine art of dining. Boys are often depicted as rude, rough and strong, while their female counterparts the complete opposite. But steps are being taken right here in Jamaica to change that age-old cliché. Watch now as boys from the Independent City Primary School in Portmore are taught fine dining and social graces. The tables were meticulously set. And in no time, all was ready for the special occasion. We're having a fine dining luncheon for our boys today and different speakers will be coming in to address our boys as it relates to fine dining and changing the culture that now exists in our country. The little crudeness and so on, we're trying to ensure that our boys be nicer to our females, to their peers and by extension just embracing our country and the aesthetics that we have here. The Boys' Day event, which was held in Portmore Heart Academy Auditorium, employed practical demonstrations and instructions to teach the boys proper dining skills and social graces. The first lesson of the day was to teach them how to properly use their napkins. And you place it in your lap. After the boys mastered this art, they learned how to properly eat their appetizers, which consisted of a warm bowl of soup and a side of roll. You take your roll up and you break off a bite-sized piece. With one finger, one hand, that's what you eat. You put back the rest on your tray and you eat just what you break off. With me, you never bite the roll, okay? And you drink your soup from the side of your spoon. And before long, these boys got the hang of it. Some were so good that they were correcting their pairs. Yeah, 
After a sumptuous appetizer, the boys were treated with a mouth-watering main course meal, and boy were they pleased. With the fork in the right hand, you should knife. The fork alone is to go to your mouth, the knife will not go to your mouth. So what was the reason for hosting such an unforgettable event for the young men in training? It's really about that as much as we spend time with the girls, we want to equally develop the boys because you know, research suggests that the boys move at a little slower pace at this age, so we want to ensure that we give them equal opportunity. I hope that other schools will emulate, will copy to ensure that our boys are exposed. We don't box them in at school every day, but we showcase them and let them realize that they are different places and when you go to different places, you behave different ways. And the effort and hard work of the school did not go unnoticed. We feel like it's the best day, the best boys day, because how they prepare it, how it looks, where it's held. Informing. Jamaica today confirmed its first imported case of coronavirus. Educating. If you follow the recommended procedures, it is highly likely that you will not get the disease. Going beyond to keep you informed and connected. Welcome to Get the Fact. Even through the pandemic. Helping you stay safe while we protect ourselves. Dependable. Impactful. Accurate. This is your J.I.S. News. Credible. Trustworthy. Every day, everywhere. Serving our customers proudly. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.